Hey YouTube, Mike here. Uh, I want to do a quick video on the Powercon uh, 1 uh, connectors from Nutrick. I uh, figured out how to put links on, so I will be adding the website and the model numbers. But the male end, which I already did onto the Bosch router, was an NAC3MX-W Powercon 1. And the uh, female end is the same model number, but with an F Powercon 1. Okay, um, the tools that you're going to need is a ruler, a marker, wire strippers, a knife, a T8 screwdriver, a pair of dikes, and a pair of cutters. I already cut the um, connector from it and put the male end on, so we'll just go right into the assembly. The parts for the unit is you have the back piece, which the lube, which I'm going to go over in a second, is for then this is a wire retainer that clamps down as you make up the back piece then you actually have the female end or the male end and then the body that this slides into that they two connect into the instructions are on the plastic to do the assembly but the first part of the assembly is to use the lube I use a synthetic grease which is good for plastic and rubber and it is also dielectric so if you get any on the wire it's not going to hurt it but you want to put just a little bit you don't need a lot of lube onto the wire and that's going to help prevent the ring that is inside of this it is a metal ring and I've already messed one up where I had to get it back on um, to help this slide over I put my finger inside of this now this is a 14 AWG two conduit connector. So you wanna kinda push this on and get it up a distance you know, away so you can work on it. Of course, the um, female end, you don't really have a lot of room for this when you're using that because you're gonna cut anywhere between four and six inches of this, enough that you can leave this that it fits real nice inside the toolbox. Then you wanna take the white piece and put that on with this angle heading into the actual uh, locking piece take off the loop okay the first cut you're gonna make is the black insulation that's at 20 millimeters and your utility knife just cut it enough that you're not cutting down into the wire Kind of a little circle around it just score it because with these type of wires you can manipulate they're they're actually called sj cords you can manipulate these so that you can break the actual plastic like that pop it off the white dust is there to help when they pull the wire through there's two pieces of rope a white synthetic rope let's cut that off you don't need that now on these with these tools being double insulated you don't have a ground wire inside of it so now clean that off the second measurement and again it's on the paper uh, actually the plastic is eight millimeters so I like to bring the both of them together mark it at eight millimeters and just slide across both wires ashtray now strip back these wires for eight millimeters one two spin them around now on the actual female and on the male end there is the three connections of course your line voltage black, your neutral white, and then the ground, which is a universal T. You don't need that. So basically, you're just gonna tighten it up if it's not tight already. Then, being as blind as I am, you wanna get your wires into your correct N and L. Find the little screws. Tighten that down. Just roll it. That one. Get it right 
It's a, okay. You don't have to go bananas on it. Okay, now on these, you're gonna find, especially on the male end, you're gonna find that there's a larger groove inside. The thread end, of course, is what's gonna make up onto this. I make a mark on it so that the large groove on the female end will mate into it because they will go in, but you want to get this in as far as possible so that these things will make up together. Now, you want to move this around so that this is pretty much all the way flush like that. So you want that flush. Now you want to make this up until this O-ring, you don't see it no more. They do make a tool for it. I did not buy the tool. I'm just gonna monkey it in there. You hear those clicks? That's the locking piece in there. Okay, you tighten that down all the way. No more yellow. Clean up your little thing here. And then you put these two together. See how they go all the way in and lock. Voila. No more pulling out. No more all that cord inside of your toolbox. Pull the two. Twist and separate it. Now, a little quick thing. This is 14 AWG 2 conduit. The one that I made the other day is 18 um, AWG 2 conduit. This is good for like probably 10 amps. Came with the Colt router, which is 5.6. This router is 15 amps. This is good for 20 amps. So if you're going to buy a bunch of males and all you really need is a female because you're gonna take your biggest drawer, which is this router, and make the cord because it's better, you can use uh, a bigger cord on smaller amps but it's not very good to use the smaller cord on bigger amps. Uh, just one other thing that I found, because I was going to buy some of these to change our big hammers and big rotary drills, a cord drilling machine, but it's not, you know, it, it, it's just not going to handle it. Plus, guys stepping on it. So I found, and I got this off of Toolnut, and they make a few different ones, and I'm going to try this on one of our extensions cord. It's called a Quick Lock. And basically, as you can see, it locks your male end in, and to release it, you pull this lever. I'm going to uh, post a link on, um, it comes with a very nice instruction sheet. I think this was like $12, I'm not sure, but I can. Also, it is good from 10 to 16 gauge cords, and as you can see, you can cut this to accept, and it gives it a very nice... Um, restraint for the end of the cord and you know they give you a little uh, thing on here that says what it prevents what it prevents it from doing okay I uh, hope uh, this was informative and um, I'll see you on the next video have a nice day